Who do you think is the last baseball player to not have an email address? So we were saying like Ortiz, but like he also like he's I guess he's got an agent, but like he's doing shit. like who's a really famous baseball player who's not doing shit? What about Jake Peavy, who uh, took his duck boat famously to a lake in Alabama and was just like, I live here now. That man does not have an email address. Great call. What about Randy Johnson? No. Randy yeah. Johnson doesn't even have a regular <laughs> mailbox. <laughs> <laughs> Randy Johnson is like, I'm very noticeable. If you want to talk to me, you'll find me. <laughs> I'm Hannah Kaiser, and this is an emergency edition of The Bandwagon. Yeah! <laughs> emergency! Welcome to the dawn of our cold, dark, post-baseball landscape, for now, anyway. And admittedly, the temporal stuff has more to do with winter in New York and the fact that daylight savings time should never end. But if you're seeing this, it does mean that the owners have locked out the players and plunged Major League Baseball into its first work stoppage in 26 years. The transaction frenzy of the past couple of weeks is fully shuttered until this gets resolved, and at some point, even next season will be at stake. If you think this is just a bunch of millionaires and billionaires squabbling about money and minutia in a battle that are largely unfold between lawyers behind closed doors, you are not wrong. But it is still important. The collective bargaining agreement, or what everybody, including me for the rest of the show, called the CBA, is the central document that governs the whole sport. And renegotiating it regularly gives players a legal voice in the business that is built on their backs. No labor pain, no labor gain. Oh. Aww. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but even casual fans who don't need their sports to come with a side of economics should care about the CBA, which dictates the rules, which dictates the game that we all love. And they should definitely care about the absence of the CBA. And so today we're going to talk about what that means legally, in practice, and for people who just want to watch baseball in three months. Over the summer, we had comedian Josh Gondelman on here to help us make baseball's crackdown on sticky stuff digestible and entertaining. And he did such a good job with that. We're way leveling up the difficulty and going to find out if he can make contract negotiations funny. Josh, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. I love that <laughs> I was so good at not knowing anything over the summer that you're like, we got to get this dumbass back in the studio. <laughs> I got it. Well, when you're not here, we call this the like, all right, let's ask an idiot. Mm -hmm. But when you're here, we don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just kind of a behind my back thing. Thank you for having me. I'm so thrilled to be here. All right. So um, I know a little bit about this and you know a little bit less. Yeah. So we're gonna see if together we can figure it out. <laughs> so. <laughs> Here's my first question, is you kind of brought this up before um, in your intro, but like, what is the CBA in, in that? Is it just the kind of financial structures and parameters of the league? Or is it also like, pitchers have to throw the ball in 10 seconds or else it's an automatic balk? Like, is it that kind of stuff? Well, or is that like a different that. rules committee? It covers everything from like, when the season starts, the joint drug agreement, uh, the domestic violence policy it covers the draft. Okay. Uh, it's so it's not the rules of baseball like you run counterclockwise. That's not written in the CBA. But pretty much any sort of <laughs> new rule would be because you would have to negotiate it out with the players. It is virtually everything, but the core of it is that it lays out the economic system that then governs the sport. Mm -hmm. All of that is in the CBA, and the CBA. Uh, Changes every couple of years, they renegotiate it, and then, like, this is the main way that baseball changes. And so, when what was the last big CBA change? Well, so the last two, are, we sort of lumped together, 2011 and 2016. Okay. That's where the owners made a lot of headway, so the... Love to see management getting wins. <laughs> you know, the yeah, people who own <laughs> baseball teams, I just feel like it's probably been a hard couple of years for them, and you just love to see them thriving. <laughs> So 1994 is what everybody knows about the baseball players went on strike in the middle of the season. That's because the owners tried to implement a salary cap, but for the people who want to get paid, it's not good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so they went on strike because they did not want a salary cap. And then eventually the owners figured out that they could sort of like soft pedal a salary cap by calling it like a luxury tax or a competitive balance tax. What is like the big thing that is at stake? What's like the big headline for this series of negotiations? Yeah. So players did not get enough in return. The critique of the union that was sort of handling negotiations for them, especially in 2016, was that they were too focused on quote unquote creature comforts. They were like, I want an extra bus seat next to me and I want more whatever. 
cheese in the clubhouse. I couldn't think of a like a what would they want? They would More want cheese in the clubhouse. Caviar? No, that's pretty good. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Cheese in the clubhouse. I mean, they want a clubhouse that's running out of cheese at the major league level. That's a red flag for your organization. That's like <laughs> you know how Van Halen was like no brown M and M's because that's like yes. a bellwether for how well people read the rest of the right. contract. That's like what like the Padres are like. We want an abundance of cheese. The Padres play. <laughs> they want. No, they, they were like we want only brown M and M's to match our <laughs> uniforms. <laughs> Basically, they did a bad job negotiating, and all they got were these like non-economic factors. Got it. Which means that now they want a whole lot of progress on the economic front. Okay. Understandably so. So the main issue is players want to get paid earlier because、um, old people are less physically able, we're slower, our knees hurt, we wake up every morning, and we're like, wow,、back. this is anti-Max、uh, Scherzer ageism. <laughs> And I will not stand for it. As someone in my early late thirties, <laughs> <laughs> the earliest part of your late thirties are really when when your physical prowess does peak.、Um, so basically, it's like they're exploiting young players who are under team control, and so there is a, that's a little bit of a tricky problem to solve because you can't just be like everybody's a free agent all the time. Nobody ever knows who's playing where, but you do need to figure out a way to get those players paid more.、Uh, right. For, like, so it's so is this idea of like. Shortening that window of team control, a、yeah. way to like extend players' earning prime and kind of it re-expand, like dilate that baseball middle class, right? So people、yeah. are getting paid while they're still in their prime, and and the teams can't be like, oh, sorry, dude, your elbows are all messed up, so we're gonna lowball you after six years of being lowballed. Exactly. So that six-year time is broken up into two. Smaller times. Okay. Zero to three, you're completely at your team's mercy. Literally, you could get paid like the major league minimum all three years. You only get raises if your team decides to give it to you. Then after three years, you hit arbitration, where you get to like negotiate, but you can only negotiate with one team. So it's not really a super fair negotiation,、sure. but you do get you do get more money. And if you don't like, you think your team is trying to lowball you, you can take them to arbitration, where like a essentially a, a judge, a lawyer decides who's more right. Um, and so, probably the change will actually come in addressing the arbitration system. So, moving that down, getting guys to arbitration a year earlier, or getting them some sort of like performance bonuses, like if you are、sure. literally an MVP candidate. So, like the biggest, best example of this is in 2019,、uh, Pete Alonso won the Home Run Derby. He made twice as much money winning the home run derby as he did for that entire baseball season、wow. play because he was making the major league minimum. So something around like either getting players to arbitration earlier or just like rewarding them for being really good, like something that's like if you're an MVP or you're an All Star, you're a Gold Glove、mm-hmm. winner, or like you're really cool. We pay you more、really、money、cool. when you're younger. <laughs> What is the feeling around the league? Does this seem like it's going to become like a protracted labor stoppage? There's not an obvious middle ground. Like they're not even sort of talking in the same structure. The union is like, we want to lower arbitration and lower free agency, and the league is like, we'll never do that. Also, we want an international draft. So like they're talking totally different things. Not a great sign. For whatever reason, people see, still seem optimistic that we're going to get this done before we miss games, but we are not going to get this done like quickly. Even、Got、if、it. even if even if we're not going to miss games, it's going to take all off season because why would it not? Like they didn't take the December second deadline that that seriously. I don't think they're going to be like, "Quick, everybody, get in a room and get this settled before Christmas." Like, Won't someone think of the pitchers and the catchers? <laughs> it's going to get settled at some point. And maybe it'll get settled because they're able to come up with a compromise that works for everybody. That's like just total baseball stuff. But almost certainly, we'll get some of this like really dry legal stuff that comes into play in terms of like how it shakes out and and this stuff like who's on the NLRB board will start to come into effect.、Mm-hmm. Sorry, that's a that's a dull note no, to、I'm, end on. I'm curious. I mean, yeah, we gotta look. We're talking about speeding up the game. <laughs> We're like, what if between every inning they read a decision <laughs> from the Supreme Court, and then we all broke it、right. into smaller groups and talked about I, what that has? To I do love that. The, I love that the league is like, oh, you think the season's too slow? Get ready for the driest <laughs> off season in history. <laughs> And we will talk about it all here at the bandwagon.、Um, yeah, so maybe if there's like major developments going forward, we'll talk about them. And if not, you'll just see us when there's baseball again. Woo!